Congress was going to spend weeks of their time drawing the heads and they had an ability to be able to pull it out, take it down, check the oil cover, put it in the drain, we have that power to run that program. seven different repairs, and I got to work on the work of construction. I got to work with my hands. So we did Monex and, and Kevlar for the work we did, and we did Teflon for, it was interesting, we did Teflon for medical purposes, and it was a Phoenician. <laughs> How about that press agent? She developed that quickly. She was ready to go. Let me read the last one on the list. I think it's one of my other sheets. It's just it's just it's just a sheet that I have that I have that I have made for you. Um, I'm just reading it now. Fill with water and throw in the plastic bag. Yeah, they were different plants. They were different. Oh, yeah, they were oh wow, they look at how many of them there. <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. I had to get different wet suits for the drills for the drills that we did. Like I had to have ten yeah, cable they, they, they had, uh, conveyor belts with all those different they, things. They call it uh, thirst check. Where you know, like they run the check the yeah, bag or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 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 But a quick cast was you could throw that water and do it and get back to the end of the world. But then you found it like that. Yeah, I had some really stupid ones too. We did wet pieces that were like glued to the ground. Yay! Still used, but not the same ones we had then. It was just a bunch of wet pieces. Picture in the picture when we did the call to art show. Picture in the picture.
DuPont created their own machine, and uh, one of the big reasons behind that was at that point, Mary, the whole thing was a, uh, I should say secret, but it was, they didn't want to share the technology with other people. Now what we did was, was we would bring companies in so they tried all the things, and uh, a lot of them were up, surprisingly, a lot of them were up around Michigan and uh, New York, which I got caught up there in left the new machines, you know. Right. It was just, the shell started popping. For a while there, it was like every three or four months, I was having to run to go to collect the machine, you know. Me and a couple of engineers, and we, uh, as soon as we got married, two weeks later, I had to go to, uh, that's when I went to Phoenix. And I went up to the Grand Canyon on my weekend off, and she was wanting to make, because if I had set up there, you would pay the difference from the hotel bill and the flight. And you said, good morning. 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 Uh, I did never ask you about my son's name tag. Is it over there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, I'll go get it. I yes, haven't even been over there to look. Yes, ma'am. It's I over there. I don't think I saw you right at that. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but right after that, they stopped and she pouted because she couldn't go with me nowhere. because she can kind of do what she wants to be involved. So I think she did Duna, apparently Duna in June or something on a real vacation. She didn't get out of town. Actually, I don't know if she can do something. The only reason I say that is, Oh, no, it's not on right now. <laughs> the, in the afterwards, though, it is. It is. Yeah. Beforehand, no, but afterwards, yeah. Yeah, uh, she does camp by me during conference week because there's no preaching. Yeah. So that's usually the first week of camp by me. So I think it's either the first or second week this year.
I'm always in the
morning, church. I welcome you in the love and grace of Christ Jesus, our Lord, and invite you to uh, turn your attention to some of the announcements that are in our bulletin. Uh, Please note on the calendar of events the meetings that are coming up this week. Particularly today at 2 o'clock, we're having our Vacation Bible School planning in the Year Building. So if you're interested in helping with Vacation Bible School, we would love to have you as part of that discussion as we look forward to that time, uh, June 10th through the 14th. And you'll see the other announcements that are there. One that isn't is that the United Methodist men will be cooking their very famous and delicious peanuts this Wednesday beginning at 3 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall. Also, you'll see the Mother's Day form if you would like to honor a very special woman in your life. um, Please fill that out and uh, you can put it in the offering plate or bring it to the office. Also, please note that General Conference begins the 23rd, so this week, and will go through um, the beginning of May, May 3rd. Delegates from all over the world, United Methodist delegates, are coming together to share in worship and also business of the United Methodist Church. There is a prayer vigil going on today, and there are still some opportunities to sign up, and you see the link in your bulletin if you'd like to be a part of that prayer vigil today. Also, Creation Care has an announcement. We'll be dedicating our labyrinth on Sunday, May 19th at 2 p.m., so please keep that on your calendars. And scholarships are available in from many different points of our church. And if you have someone who is graduating and looking forward to moving forward with their education, please have them check out those available scholarships and apply. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of God. Good morning, friends. Good to see everybody here, even all those people way in the back. And if you are able, please stand and join me in the call to worship. 
We have come to hear the voice of love. Let us listen well to the Spirit's song. It sings of God's mercy. It's his message of grace. It proclaims Christ's victory over sin and death. It declares new beginnings that have no end. We have come to hear God's message of love. Forever life begins right now. Now, if you remain standing and join me in the opening hymn, which you can find on number 57 in your hymnal or on the wall, and we're only doing one, three, four, and five. may be seated. And if you would, please turn in your hymnal to page 33 as we celebrate together the baptism of Andrew. I'd like to invite Andrew's parents to come forward. And Benjamin, big brother Benjamin, yay. <laughs> it is a gift to be able to celebrate this work of God this time where we acknowledge together as a community of faith that God names us and claims us as his own by his grace. And so, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. And as a member of Ann Street United Methodist Church, Cynthia, thank you, thank you. And so Jackie and Emily... I ask you, on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? And do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to all people 
of all ages, nations, and races. And will you nurture Andrew in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself and to profess his faith openly and to lead a Christian life. And do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Andrew now before you in your care? We will surround Andrew with a community of love and forgiveness, that he may grow in his trust of God and be found faithful in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. And now we are a community of faith. We come from different places and different backgrounds, but we share this faith together. So now let us join in professing the Christian faith upon which we stand and upon which Andrew will now also stand. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Who is conceived by the Holy Spirit? Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water, and after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Praise the Lord, tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and Andrew who receives it, to wash away his sin and clothe him in righteousness throughout his life, that dying and being raised with Jesus, he may share in his final victory. Benjamin, you want to you wanna help me pour a little water in here? Okay, good. Can I pick you up? this on your brother's head. Thank you. Hey, big boy. Hey, boy. Robert Andrew, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Now, if you all would put your hands on Andrew. Andrew, may the Lord bless you and cover you with his Holy Spirit, that you would be filled with his grace and his spirit and live a faithful life as a disciple of Jesus. We pray this in God's holy name. Amen. Amen, Benjamin (laughs) says. Yeah. Do you want to walk with me so we can introduce Andrew to the want to go walk? Okay. First of all, let's go see the choir. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. This is Andrew. Andrew, this is some of your new family. Yeah. Let's go this way, Benjamin. Down the steps. Yep, good job. It's more fun to jump down. <laughs> it always is. Hey, hey. Hey, church family. Hey. And this is the one we've made a promise to, that we're going to live faithfully so he can see what living out God's love and grace looks like. Let's go back here, Benjamin. Because these folks are afraid of the front row. (laughs) But they still want to share in everything. See that? Hey, yeah. Say hey to your new family. Yeah, okay, you getting some wolf pack signs? I don't don't know how that family leans, but... (laughs) We're... Yeah, say hey. Hey, thanks, Benjamin. Yeah, we're all in this together from little brothers to the church family to grandmas and grandpas. We go down this way. I think Andrew is going to get the best baptized baby award. (laughs) Yeah. Come on, Benjamin. Good job. Thanks for walking. That was a long walk, wasn't it? Yep. (laughs) Sure was, Pastor Dina. (laughs) Yeah. Yes, big boy. Thanks, Benjamin. And now let us pray. Holy Lord, we are so thankful that we get to share in the gift of your grace, that you name us and claim us as your own, that you make us family through your Holy Spirit, and by the grace, the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, help us remember that we are a witness to all who see us and how we live, to those as new as Andrew and to those... um, who are seeing the many years of their days. Help us to honor you, God, as your church, as your people, and as your witnesses. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Let's give them a... Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Thank you all. And now let us open our hearts and hear the word. Today I'll be sharing Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. 
thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now, if you'll join me in the prayer that you'll find in your bulletin. Loving God, you were the shepherd of the Lamb. Satan baited Jesus with promises of great power, his disciples encouraged him to hate rage, no, sorry, ixnay, to answer hate with rage. Your son prayed to be spared the cup of agony. Holy God, you sent the lamb to be our shepherd. Let us hear our Savior's voice, and follow him all the days of our lives. that we too may do your will, and the world may know your saving glory. Amen. And now let us offer signs of grace and peace to one another. Thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> Good morning. Peace be with you. <laughs> Peace be with you. <laughs> oh, Benjamin. Well, come up for chip this time. Come on, you can sit on the Invite the kids to come up for our time together. You can just sit right there where you are, Harrison. Harrison, sit down on here. There you go. There you go. Here comes some more. Come on down. Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Good to see you. How are you guys this morning? Hey, woohoo. How's the choir this morning? Y'all behaving? <laughs> How's everybody doing this morning? Are you good? Are you good? You're going to go on a boat? You might get wet today. Nope. You're not getting wet. I hope that works out for you. So, um, have you ever seen one of these before? This is a shepherd's staff. This is actually a real shepherd's staff. I bought it from the animal store, so I know it's a real shepherd's staff. And, uh, and it's used for um, a person who takes care of sheep. Do you know who takes care of sheep? The shep- 
shepherd. The shepherd. Yeah, the shepherd takes care of the sheep. Everybody say shepherd. shepherd. Takes care of the sheep. Yeah, and a lot of times a shepherd would have carried a staff, something like this, and um, it was used to help take care of the sheep. Like if one of the sheep was going astray, Harrison, can you help me out for a second? Yeah, I want you to pretend like you're about to go over a cliff over there. Guess what the shepherd would do? Shep would grab you around the neck <laughs> and keep you, thank you, Harrison, and keep you from glowing over, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Miss Denise just read for us a few minutes ago. That would be like if you were walking on a sh uh, very steep path, the shepherd would take care of the sheep. And guess what else? I just lie down. You would just lie down I instead of falling down? Yeah, that, that would be a good idea. Yeah, but the shepherd w would always take care of the sheep. And guess what? If the shepherd called the sheep, the sheep know the sound of the shepherd's voice, and they will come to the shepherd because they know his voice. And the scripture that Pastor Dean is going to read in a minute says that the shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So I want you to imagine that you are in a fenced-in area right here and right here, but there's no gate in our fenced-in area, is there? So what could the sheep do? Could the sheep escape out of the gate, out of the opening? Yeah, the scripture. You could just jump or you could just bye, walk your way right through and get away. But the shepherd doesn't want the sheep to get away, does he? So the scripture says that the shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And so guess what? When it was time to rest at the end of the day, the shepherd would actually lay down in the opening so that the sheep couldn't get out. He would literally lay down his life to take care of his sheep. Do you know who our good shepherd is? Who's our shepherd? Jesus. Say it like you mean it, Peyton. Who's our shepherd? That's right. Who's our shepherd, people? Jesus. Jesus is the shepherd. Not only is he the shepherd, he is the good shepherd who lays down his life for us. And, and Jesus laid down his life in a whole different way by dying on the cross for us, didn't he? But Jesus is the best shepherd. And guess what? He knows your name and he loves you and he cares for you every single day. So I want you to remember that, okay? Can you remember that? Yes. Can you remember that? All right, sheep, let's say our prayers. You repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God we, love you so much. we love you so much. And we thank you for being the good shepherd and for laying your life down for us. Thank you for knowing us by name and for loving and caring for us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. All right, you can scooch back to your seat. Thank you, guys. You're awesome. Y'all need to borrow this? Thank you. <laughs> 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 This time in our service of worship, we are blessed to be able to share in the gift of prayer. We lift up those who are printed in the back of our bulletin. You can see those. If during this time you just want to lay your hand on all of those names as part of the prayer practice, I invite you to do that. And also hear these that have been lifted up through uh, the books that are at each entrance to the church. Uh, for today, oh, there we are. Thank you. Um, we do want to lift up General Conference, which is taking place, and continue to remember Sonny Newton, who uh, has had surgery recently. Also, the family of Joyce Skipper and Leanne, who's under the weather, and Ray, what's that name? 
Christy, recovering from surgery. Thank you. Let us join our hearts and minds as a family in prayer. Holy Lord, we give you thanks and praise for this day that you have made, this day we are blessed to rejoice in. We have so much to give you thanks for. The many blessings that fill our lives each and every day, the blessings of family and friends, of church family, the blessings of the beauty of your creation and work that is meaningful and help that is all around. Lord, we thank you for the blessings that we see and can point to and say thank you, Jesus, and for many blessings that we don't realize, the ways that you are with us, that you strengthen us, that you guide us, and that you help us. Lord, we are so thankful for all that you do in our lives and all that you help us with in each and every day. We lift up those now who we've mentioned by name and remember in our hearts, those who would need your touch, your healing, your help, your hope. God, we thank you that even before we ask that you are already at work, working out your good in places of need, in hospital rooms, in assisted living homes, in homes, in places of work, in relationships. God, you are in all places. And your grace is sufficient to do more than we can even begin to ask. And so we claim that grace for those who are struggling this day, that they would know the power of your presence with them that they would know the strength of your love enfolding them, and that they would feel the strength of these prayers being lifted up on their behalf. God, we thank you and we pray this in your holy name. As we join in that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, as we pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue our worship of God with the giving of God's tithes and our offerings.
Father, Lord, we thank you for the gift of giving back to you and pray that you would help us and these gifts to be the answer to somebody's prayer, to be a blessing to one in need. Lord, let us, our lives, and these offerings shine your light and share your love that you may be known in this community and throughout the world. We pray in your holy name. Amen. You may be seated. Our gospel lesson comes from the gospel of John, the 10th chapter, and I've added two additional verses at the end of the scripture that's printed in your bulletin. Hear the word of the Lord. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I'm the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. In verse 27 and 28, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Listening to God is listening to love. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, love in flesh. So when we listen to God, we are listening to love. And this listening is and is not easy. It's a choice that we make. And yay for the choice that we've made to be here this morning and to hear God's word through song and scripture and through the sharing and celebration of baptism. Yea, for those who have joined us online and those who will at a later time. Yea, for this choice to be in the presence of God and to share in this service of worship together as we listen to love. But then, after this hour comes to a close, oh my goodness. Because when we walk out those doors, it starts to happen. When we get in our cars, it starts to happen. It may be even happening right now because it's like somebody says, ready, set, go, and shoots the gun and we're off. We're off into the rest of the day. We're off into preparing for the next week. We're off to deadlines and responsibilities and dance lessons and gymnastics. And we're off to preparing for tests and and fixing what's broken because if you own anything, it's going to break. We're off. And suddenly... It's hard to remember to listen to love. And then if you throw social media in, oh my goodness, 
I don't go on Facebook very often because before I know it, an hour has passed. I do go on occasionally to kind of check out what y'all are up to. <laughs> but <laughs> I'll see something that'll make me think, oh, I didn't, I didn't know about that. I want to look that up. And then I start researching that, and that leads me to something else. And, and then I'm down a rabbit hole, and an hour has gone by. So... I'm not there often, and I do just want to say, please don't private message me and think I'm going to see it, because I won't. <laughs> so text me if you, want to, if you want to tell me something. The point is, listening is a choice, and it's not always easy. There are so many voices that are vying for and competing for our time and attention and there are times when also we actively choose not to listen. I've shared this story, but I want to share it again because it just illustrates so well this choosing not to listen. Our niece, Amelia, uh, before she could talk, was getting her bath. And she had had that one time, and parents will understand this, that one time where the soap got in her eyes, so forevermore, there was this trauma of bath time and getting her hair shampooed. Well, Byron, her dad, walked in and because there was all kinds of commotion. He heard from the bathroom when he came home from work, and, and he, he said to Kathleen, um, what's going on? And, she, and Kathleen said, Amelia won't let me wash her hair, and I keep telling her that if she'll just lean her head back, I'll cover her eyes and pour the cup of water and she won't get soap in her eyes. And Amelia was shaking her head and, and um, Byron said, Amelia, listen to your mother. And Amelia went. <laughs> she couldn't talk. <laughs> but she knew what that meant. <laughs> and we can do the same thing with God, can't we? Like, love your enemy. I'm sorry I didn't hear that. <laughs> Pray for those who persecute you. Oh, no, that does not sound good. <laughs> Go the second mile. All those things that we hear God say, but we don't want to listen to. We can choose not to listen we can think we're listening sometimes. My brother John and my mom were, I have two older brothers. He was having a conversation as a teenager, and my mom said, you just don't ever listen to me. And he said, Mom, I always listen to you. And they both locked eyes, and she said, well, you don't do what I tell you to do. And he said, that's right, but I always listen to you. But that's not listening in Greek. When Jesus says, my sheep listen to my voice, the listen, that word in Greek is akue, and it literally means not only to hear, but to respond and obey. So he was not listening in Greek. My other brother, my oldest brother, is Bill, and I will never forget this morning, um, my mom would go downstairs to the um, little rec room where his bedroom was to wake him up for school. And she'd say, Bill, it's time to get up. You've got to go to school. He wouldn't get up. He'd go down again. Bill, you're going to be late. You've got to get up. You've got to go to school. He wouldn't get up. She went down a third time this morning, and then she turned around and went back up to the kitchen. And she thought to herself, I woke up in a good mood. I was happy when I got out of bed, but now I'm angry and I'm frustrated because this teenager will not get out of the bed. And so she filled a cup of water. And she went back downstairs. And she said, Bill, if you do not get up out of bed, I'm going to pour this cup of water on you. And he did not move. And then he did. <laughs> and from that point on, 
he listened in Greek. <laughs> he listened, responded, and obeyed. <laughs> there was never another time, he will tell you to this day, there was never another time where he did not get up when my mother asked him to get up. I want to share a brief video with you. It's about, um, as Michelle mentioned, how sheep hear the shepherd's voice and that, that listening. So. I love that video because it shows so clearly how other voices that aren't known to the sheep are not responded to. They don't even look up from their grazing, but when they hear the shepherd's voice, they look up and they immediately start to follow, to come. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus is saying, as intimately as the Father knows me and I know the Father, that's how intimately I know my sheep. That's how intimately my sheep know me. It's all about relationships. That illustrated a strong bond of relationships. The shepherd is with their sheep constantly, almost 24-7. They live together day and night. Remember when the shepherds heard that Jesus had been born in Bethlehem, they were keeping their watch by night, right, over their sheep to protect and care for them. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and they listen to me. Jesus is all in as our shepherd. Jesus is with us 24-7 to protect and care. But the one thing that is heartbreaking is that there are times when we aren't with Jesus. To truly listen to the shepherd, we have to choose to put time and effort into that relationship. And just like any relationship, it is a choice to make that time. The first couple that I had the privilege of sharing in their wedding ceremony here at Ann Street uh, rekindled their, their friendship over the internet during COVID. They knew each other in school, but then had gone separate ways, and then they were on separate continents and started talking online and realized that even that far away that there was a spark. And so for a year, they did the work to meet and talk and have meals together, even though when they called it dinner, one was having breakfast because they were so separated by, by, um, by space and distance. But they made the effort to work on their relationship because they believed it was worth it. The relationship was worth it. And church, our relationship with Jesus has to be worth it. 
has to be worth our time and our effort. And it's just the basics. I mean, we know them. To spend time with Jesus, to know him better, to build on that relationship and grow it, we do come to worship. And we have times of fellowship because we share and grow because of one another's stories and and lives and experiences. And we grow that relationship through prayer and through Bible study and through engaging in ministries that Christ calls us to do. We know the basics of that relationship building. And by God's grace, because we definitely need God's grace to do it, we can grow our relationship and have that listening heart for God. A Greek listening heart that not only hears but responds and obeys. We do this because the Good Shepherd is all in for you and me. And this is the last piece of Greek I'll share with you this morning. Jesus is all in. He says, I lay down my life for the sheep. And I love the literal translation of the Greek for I lay down my life for the sheep. It literally says, and the soul of me I am placing over the sheep. And the soul of me I am placing over the sheep. Isn't that a beautiful thought? And the soul of Christ Jesus is placing over Andrew. And the soul of Christ Jesus is is placing over Deborah. And the soul of Christ, Jesus, is placing over Iona. And the soul of Christ, Jesus, is placing over you and me. Thanks be to God that Jesus is all in. Jesus longs for that intimate relationship with his sheep. He is the good shepherd. The complete and utter all of Jesus is given to us by God's grace through his life, death, and resurrection. The complete and utter all of Jesus is ours as a gift. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Follow me. I am the good shepherd. Hear my voice. I am the good shepherd. Listen to God's all-powerful love from which nothing can separate you in life or death or in all creation. God, help us to listen to the voice of God, to listen to the love of God, In Christ Jesus, our Savior, let us pray. Holy Lord, you so loved this world that you sent your Son into it, that we might see what real love looks like, that we might hear his voice each and every day, each and every step that we take, that we might know that we never have to journey alone, that we might be with you. God, help us to grow our relationship with you. Thank you for those that we share this journey with. Help us to learn from each other. Thank you for making us a church by the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for making Jesus the head and the shepherd of all of our souls. God, help us to listen to your voice, the Greek listen, that we may respond and obey for your glory. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Our closing hymn is Jesus Calls Us, hymn number 398.
verses 1, 2, 3, and 5. If you're able, let's stand as we sing together. Let us go forth from this place to listen for the voice of love, for God's call, for God's blessing, for God's gift of grace through Jesus Christ our Savior. In the love of God, the grace of Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.